Hello and welcome everyone. Today I want to check out a new free plugin again, which is the D Reverb, a reverb plugin. And I will check it out on the beat that I also showed you in my last video because it's a cool beat and it has a lot of material that would be interesting with um, a new reverb, I guess. So this is what it looks like. And what is actually the name of the developer? Can we see that? Uh, Stone Voices, yeah. Um, and you can find it on pluginsforfree.com. So yeah, that's so much about the accessibility. Now let's actually try it on some material. Let's see what we have. Okay, so first of all, let's do the obvious thing that everyone would do and try it on the snare. I currently have very dry drums on this thing and that's for a reason because I do have a reverberant snare at this um, place and then it stays for the whole track. So I don't actually need it in the beginning, but I still want to try because it would be cool to just see what it sounds like. Okay, so we are immediately greeted with a very dark sound. Like that is a sound that is really not that transparent, but more like dark and strong. So let's just uh, first of all find out if we can dial in some low cut. Yeah, the, the low cut um, sounds really good. I'm actually quite impressed because in the reverb that I usually use, uh, Raum, the low cut does not sound so good in my opinion. It just makes things thin, but... Um, like, I, I don't know, I, I don't tend to go over this value with it, usually. But this one sounds like I can actually go there. It also uses a different metric, it's, it's in Hertz and not in decibels, so I suppose it's just a different filter type. This is an actual low cut and ROM uses a low shelf, I guess. Um, so that's probably why it sounds different. Okay, that's interesting. Now we could hear the actual delays. Wow, that's a very clean diffuser. Like when when it makes these delays to a diffused sound, it does that in a very extremely clean way. There are literally no resonances and it's like, it's just purely diffused. And um, th this diffusion knob makes a lot of sense. By the way, about the controls, they feel very well designed. Like you can drag them, you can double click them to go back. Shift works. Oh, shift mouse wheel works as well. So yeah, this developer really thought about all this stuff, which is um, incredible nowadays. Um, one little thing that I would add is maybe a little mute or solo button for dry and wet so that I can ha uh, leave my settings here for general purpose, but I can mute the dry signal to only listen to the wet signal for the development of my patch or something, you know, that would make a lot of sense.
Okay, let's check out the other knobs. Cool. I was expecting ex excursion to be something like a chorus modulation, but it really doesn't sound so wishy-washy as, as a chorus does. Um, and that's actually a good thing, even though we are talking about reverb, because I don't want it to sound like a chorus, but like a reverb, even though they are very closely related to each other. But I, I sometimes just don't like how a, a chorus sounds, and then I'm very glad when a reverb also gives you another option to add modulation to the signal, even though I don't really get what does with what this does. Now, cool, let's check out this stuff. Okay, this is how much dampening is on on the bass and the high frequencies. Even though I don't I don't get why this says ratio and this does not, but it's definitely something like that. It it feels like it's something like that. This adds some serious weight to the low end. I like that. Crossover frequency self-explanatory high. I don't know why this is not like this um, a multiplier, but a frequency. But it also feels a bit like multiplying or reducing the high end length, the length of the frequencies in the high end. Uh, the knob implies that it's something different, but it feels like that. Using a low volume on high does give it a, a nice um, sound that it's kind of a bit more wooden, I would say. But it also makes the artifacts more audible. Like with um, high turned up very much, it sounded like perfect diffusion and then I turn it down and it sounded a bit more delay again. Actually, maybe I will use this. No, makes no sense in the context. Okay, so, so far so good. This was not a sound where I wanted to keep the reverb anyway. Let's try something more realistic. Now we have the tonal snare here, and it already has a reverb, and without it, it sounds like this. So, why don't we just try a different reverb? I can already say that I really like that it just gives me a, a whole different flavor immediately, something that is definitely not possible with Raum.
actually this gives me a, a nice little idea. Um, we have these different containers here and I want to have a container that lets me uh, interpolate between two different chains. I think that would be the layer one. All right, so it's not exactly what I wanted because it's like I don't have a mix knob for interpolating between these two. But I guess I can just make one myself by applying a macro to this volume. Minus one. And then putting this down to um, minus infinity and give it plus one. Now I can interpolate between the two. And this is like um, a reverb mix. Oh, there is an issue. Uh, Raum is currently not on. a bit of a problem because when I'm at 50% it is a bit quieter in volume than with 0 and 100. That is, um, that was expected because reverbs are like, um, well, slightly correlated but not really, but a bit. And, um, hmm, yeah. It's it makes it hard to decide what's best, but I do feel like the reverb's actually better than Raum in this context. Has this cool warm tone. I think we will just go with it for now, even though I already mixed this track as good as I could at that possible day. Um, it might be that I just found something even better. And so let's just try that in uh, at a place where there are more other sounds. Wait, where are the other sounds? Okay, actually I had to go back to Rome a little bit because uh, the metallic tone of, of this reverb or the way I have set it up um, does contribute to the um, rather hard music and it, it just sounded better with a lower darker tone in the intro. 
because it's a bit more chill. Now let's try it on the strums. The strums are at the moment um, an instance of Harmor. And they have the property that I um, applied a bunch of MIDI effects to make it a bit like guitar strums. But they don't have reverb yet, so it would make sense to test that. I have never been a big fan of pre-delay because it starts to sound unnatural really quickly and that, that's why I have a bit of critique on this knob. Um, as you can see it already exceeds the audible range of delaying rather quickly. For, in my opinion this, this happens from 30 milliseconds on and everything else is just um, well a little bit over the top. So. I would say a good knob design is always made that at least half the knob is kind of reasonable and then the playful stuff begins. But this is already getting out of hand at this point. Also the pre-delay does not have um, parameters moving on its delay line, which is a bit of a shame. I'm currently wondering if the decay time at least has. Yeah, the other parameters seem like they are smooth. Short decay times really rarely make sense because they feel a bit cut off, but I'm not mad about that. Sounds cool. Cool, I think I will just keep it like this, like a, a very subtle, nuanced um, background ambience. Okay, so another sound that I already have in here that probably already has reverb as well, yes, um, is this organ. And this organ has the property to get more and more notes during its playback. Let's just try adding yet another reverb on top. We don't have to actually put it after the other reverb. We don't have to just stick to just one reverb. Why would we?
Wait, 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 wait. Why does it sometimes feel a bit laggy? Is is it the connection of my mouse or is it actually the plug-in? Let's see, fast motion. It's kind of laggy. Now try a different plug-in. Let's make another instance of ROM just really quickly. Not laggy. So it does seem to be an issue of the plug-in that it doesn't repaint in time. It feels a bit annoying, but I'm not too mad about it because so far this plugin has been great. Okay, cool. I, I really like that. Let's let's see what it does for the whole mix. It really makes it, it helps the organ sit back in the background even more and make space for the the harps and the trumpets. Now that the trumpets have more space for themselves, I can actually do something that I um, should do now, and that could that could not have been the case before, which is boosting the low mids a bit. wondering about something else especially considering what just happened to the organs in this um, drop I always felt like the low mids are a bit too strong like I really like that they are strong but there is just a slight bit of too much so what if I just put the reverb on this thing which is, which layers the the guitar First of all, the cool thing, since this thing is um, like cut by a MIDI triggered gate, uh, you can watch the other video about that. I basically used a filter and, and the MIDI triggered gate to filter them by the MIDI notes. And that also cuts off the reverb now, just so you're not wondering why that happens.
Nice high end boost. Let's see what it does. like the glitches on this one. I don't know if it now sounds too dominant, too, too much um, putting itself in front of the actual guitar. But it does take away some of this low mid bulkiness and it adds very interesting textures to the high end. So I will just keep it like that for now. Now I just have to make sure that the hole, the hole is um, kind of stopping here. Because it doesn't sound good that it just goes on there. Um yeah, let's let's do that. The lagginess of the parameter is annoying when making automation, especially for people who want to play the automations. I am someone who wants to draw them anyway, so it's not much of a problem for me. But some people might be uh so I would change that if I was the developer. All right. <coughs> hey. <coughs> Why? <coughs> oh. <coughs> oh, oh no, that, that was a bitwig, bitwig thing. <coughs> Wait, it was not? I am confused. Now it's definitely turned on. Okay. It it got quieter, but it was still there. I don't I don't really understand why. Or was it already there before? Oh yeah, it was. Then never mind, never mind. I was I I thought it was the effect that does that, but it's not really true. Oh. oh no, the wet knob is not smoothed. That is not a smooth parameter modulation. That is not good. Um, yeah, the developer made an awesome plugin, but those are the kinds of details that make or break the usability sometimes. So. That is definitely something I would look out for. I would just make a safe automation out of the part where there is actually sound. But yeah, it's like it, it works because there is an actual break in this composition. 
But for a more versatile use case, there would be per there would have to be parameters moving on this thing. Great. Now I don't care if there is moving him. Actually, now that I uh, found out that it's actually not the reverb that put something here, I will just get rid of the automation altogether. It's not really needed. But that was probably um, helpful to the developer to find out some culprits of the plugin, I guess. Let's actually check out the, the dirty ride a bit. It is a right symbol that I crushed with a cl clipper and then I used a delay with um, a bunch of fancy stuff in the feedback loop to make it sound more interesting. Now let's also on top of that use um, a reverb, why not? And again, this plugin is really great for just adding some subtle background ambience to the sound that already had good ambience to make it just have even better ambience. Now, I think that's enough for one video. It's probably already too long, but I think it showed that this is a really good plugin. If I was the developer, I would be very proud of myself, first of all. I mean, I have not even checked out the presets. Um, I'm not much of a preset guy anyway, but there would be something that I would check out if I um, wanted to make a complete video. Also, the, the the extra features in the options menu that are also laggy, by the way. So it's definitely something about the whole plugin that is laggy that that should be fixed, and also the parameters moving situation on some of these parameters should be fixed. Um, but apart from that. It's like really cool and it has great parameter ranges on most parameters. It has a good workflow uh, in general with this interface. It has a lot of extra features that uh, some people don't think about. Like you can not only set the dry and wet knob individually, which is not even something that I desperately need, but you can on top of that even change the in and out gain. I'm not quite sure why you can change the input gain because there is no or at least as far as I know, there are no, no non-linear processors in a reverb, but apparently there are and there is an input gain. But what I definitely like is the output gain because then you can just define the balance between dry and wet here um, without caring a lot about gain matching with dry. And then you can use the gain out knob to gain match it with a bypass signal. Even though I gotta say, I would like the bypass knob to be close to the um, to the output gain because I, when I use the output gain or the bypass knob, I also use the other thing. Like for example, in Kotelnikov, the bypass is right next to the output gain because the TDR knows that people use these together. Uh, apart from that, it totally makes sense that the bypass is up here and it would not make so much sense to have only the output gain up here and the input gain down here. They would definitely look silly, but um, it would make sense to just have both of them together. Um, another thing that I don't quite get is why there is a meter in this plugin, because as I said, it has no non-linear stuff in it as far as I know. Like what's what's the, the gain that I get from seeing a bunch of meters? 
Should it just make the uh, UI look more responsive? Or is, does it actually have like some function, some cool function? Even though that makes me think something. Yeah, no, not really. I just hope that if there is no input gain on the meters, that this would maybe make it, the UI make less la laggy because I could imagine that the developer just made some very simple mistake like repainting the whole window constantly or something like that instead of just the parts that need repainting. That is oft a reason why a plugin might appear laggy. Mm, but no, I could not figure it out on the fly. Um, yeah, I think I said everything. I will definitely keep on using it despite the lack, lack of parameters moving and um, non-lagginess because it just has a cool sound and it's a perfect alternative for the more high-pitched sound of Raum. Uh, it has more of this soul, solely warm character that I often also really like in reverbs. I'm currently a bit lacking in cool reverbs, so I'm very glad that this was released. Uh, I just hope that there will be some patches for the things that I just mentioned because then it would be just perfect. And I think I will just end this video like that.